Today on Zola Levitt Presents, we will hear two voices from Israel. One, a native Israeli believer, and two, a Christian believer who happens to live in Israel with the last name of Hart. Stay with us. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Zola Levin presents. Shalom, friends. I'm David Hart. Welcome to Zola Levitt Presents. And I'm Kirsten Hart. We have a great program for you today. Sarah Lieberman, who is our Hebrew teacher here on the program, I got to interview her. You did. A while ago. And I learned this about Sarah, that she is what they call a sabra which means she was born in Israel and lived in the United States for a while. And her, her Hebrew is amazing, but her English is spot on too. I didn't even know that she could be fluent in both. I mean, she's just amazing. She is. We sat down with our son, Ryan Hart, who lives in Jerusalem and got his perspective on what it's like living in Israel. We also have Dr. Jeffrey Seif with us. He'll be with us later on in the program. Let's go to our son, Ryan, right now, uh, where we got to talk to him about life in Israel. Here's Ryan. It is a beautiful day here in Yerushalayim, but it's even more of a beautiful day here today because we are sitting here at lunch with our wonderful son who lives here in Jerusalem, Ryan Hart. Hey! Yay! We've been counting the months again and the weeks, and I think I've been bugging you a little bit, telling you how Maybe excited we are bit. to come. No, but you haven't been, bug been bugging me at all. I've been counting the days and the months, the weeks, the we hours, the seconds as well. And we're sitting at one of your favorite spots where you come all the time. This is called First Station. Yep, it's the First Station. It was the old train station, but now it's been converted to a lot of shopping, a lot of restaurants. It has a cool nightlife here. There's all kinds of stuff to do, and I love it. Yeah, I know you brought us here right when we got to Jerusalem the first time at night, mm -hmm. and we were surprised at how peaceful it was around here. Uh, gals were out uh, jogging at night. Kids we, are playing. Kids, kids were kids playing, playing and we just had such a peace when we found out how peaceful it is for you to live here. Yeah, you know, it's really surprising. Uh, now, don't be mad at me. <laughs> there have been some times where I'm hanging out with my friends until maybe 12.30, even later at night, and is that past curfew? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Don't be mad, like I said. <laughs> no, but I'll, we'll just, I'll decide to walk home. And it can be really late at night, but it doesn't even matter. I always feel safe walking home no matter what. So you got a text a while back when you were living in the USA. Mm -hmm. And this text said, hey, Ryan, how would you like to live in <laughs> Israel? <laughs> I don't think that was by chance. I think, tell us what your experience was. If you felt God calling you here, how did that, how did that come about? So when I got that text asking if I would want to come here and live here and work for two years, I, I thought, why me? But it really has been God working through everything. Like I see that in just the opportunities that I've been given. I've gotten to travel all around Israel filming amazing projects that ICEJ helps out with. Uh, ICEJ is the organization that I'm with, the International Christian Embassy Jerusalem. And I've just been able to make so many connections with people here in the land and even outside of it. Just people who come here for tours, they're here for a day, a week, a month, a year, even more. I get to meet them at the young adults group that I go to with King of Kings. Yeah, tell us about your church. Yeah, I go to King of Kings. It's a uh, it's a church in Jerusalem. I volunteer with the production team there. And so sometimes I'm running words, sometimes I'm running camera, sometimes I'm directing the cameras for what to do for the live broadcast that they do. And so that along with the young adults group that I attend have just been a really solid way for me to connect with people here in the land and just make lifelong friends. Yeah, that's amazing. Now, we have food in front of us. I know we're talking about your it life. It looks But sometimes amazing. the food is more important than, than <laughs> we are. I'm just kidding. Okay, so we have, and this, we say hummus, but you say? Hummus. Hummus. Ah. 
and pita. Pita, and there's tahini, and it looks like some eggplant, some lentils, olive oil, and some other greens on top of that. It looks beautiful. Take your bite, because I'm digging in. Yeah, there let's go. dig in I'm a little bit. I'm going in, <laughs> and... Mm. Oh, we don't have that in the States. Mm. Oh, that is so smooth, isn't it? It's really amazing. That is so good. Mm. Okay, so when you come to this restaurant, what do you usually order? When I come here, the fish and chips are actually quite good. I'm a big fan of them. And, but there's really anything here. All the restaurants here at the first station are great. And you have a huge variety. There's Asian restaurants, there's uh, traditional Israeli food, there's burgers, there's baked potatoes. There's really all but kinds of stuff. the burgers don't have cheese on it, right? The burgers don't have ah, cheese. That's where they get you. <laughs> I wanna, go, mm, I wanna go back real quick to like what you're doing here yeah. in Israel. I've gotta tell you, I am such a proud dad that you, I'm, as we grew up, as you and your brother were young, we'd sing together as a family. And I just had no idea as a kid that you would someday be leading worship. And we've had the, the wonderful opportunity to see you wor lead worship at ICEJ. And tonight, I believe you'll be helping at King of Kings. That's right. So um, did you ever think that you'd be leading worship in Jerusalem. <laughs> leading worship in Jerusalem, uh, really leading worship in general. Uh, besides singing, I never really uh, thought I would do much more, but yeah. thanks to you guys getting me my favorite birthday present ever, nice. uh, my first guitar, I've really been able to grow in that. And it's, it's so much fun to see that where uh, they just threw me in at ICEJ asking, hey, would you mind leading worship? Uh, sure. And it was my first time playing in front of people. But since that time, I've just been able to grow in that. And it's really been a way that I'm able to connect with God, I feel. Uh, just really looking at the words, just feeling the chords as I'm playing. It's something that I've been able to grow in. And it's something that really is connected to who I am now. So I, well, I was going to say something. I know the answer. But has your spiritual life grown since you moved to God's holy land? No. <laughs> <laughs> of course it has. Of course it has. Really, nobody comes to Jerusalem unless God calls them. And so in my time here, there have been times of struggles where it's really, I question, why have I been called here? But then God answers that with his perfect timing of, just showing me whether it's hanging out with friends and someone like just says something really encouraging to me or if it's during a shoot where uh, I'm just able to share what someone is saying and it just really impacts me. And so my prayer life with just walking the streets and praying for the peace of the city, just praying for you guys, I pray for you guys a lot. Well, we and do too, every I'm day so, for you. I'm so excited for where you guys are, are in life. It's super exciting to see this. But just uh, praying for you guys, for Tyler and Carrie, for just friends back home. It's just, I really feel God moving here. And it's fun to feel that and let it elevate me. I, I had one of those aha moments yesterday. We've been here now to Israel three times and every place that we go, I just want to stand there and, and soak it in. We're in Shiloh, we're, we're at the Western Wall, we're at different places and I, I just wanted to absorb it. And yesterday, as we were filming, I'd watch people just walk by these places like it was just natural to them. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I started to feel that, like, oh, yeah, we're here and there. It's because we feel like we're home when we're here. Yeah. And I know that that's how you feel. Is it still, does it still just, is it unreal that you're living in, in God's land? I still wake up every morning in awe that I'm living here. But it feels natural. It's a weird mix of natural and just almost a sense of reverence, like, wow, why me? Why am I the one who's able to be here? Uh, and so like, yeah, friends and I will just, hey, you wanna walk to the Western Wall to the Kotel? Yeah, sure. Hey, you guys wanna go to a prayer house? Yeah, sure. 
and we're walking in the old city. We're walking where Jesus walked, and then we'll just stop and get falafel somewhere. <laughs> right. It's this strange, it almost snaps you back to reality. Yeah. Like, wow, this is where I live. Right. But there's so much history here. There's so much to this city, to this land, that it's absolutely incredible. That's great. God, call, I know you're about to say something. Go ahead. But it's, it's amazing. God called you, and then he opened up the door for us, for Zola Levitt. It's so amazing. So we never dreamed that God would use the Hart family in Israel, but we're just right. vessels and tools, and, and we're just so thrilled that God is using you. I mean, it's when you're a parent one day, and your kids are being used by God, you'll see, you'll get it. Just like God is using our son in the Holy Land, and you're doing so much for the people here. It's this pretty neat. Amazing. It's pretty and neat. <laughs> finally, we're having lunch with you yeah. in Jerusalem. I think our lunch is about here, and after we eat, we're gonna sing a song. Let's do that. Great. <laughs> Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed, then sings my soul, my Savior God to how great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and to proclaim my God, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. We've had a lot of interviews on this program, and I've got to admit that was my favorite of all. I would agree. He's an adorable <laughs> person to interview. Yeah, we're excited too that he just called us and said that he signed up for a third year to volunteer at the Christian Embassy. He's a he busy boy. He loves it there. He loves Jerusalem. Yeah. Thank you for watching our interview with our boy. Stay with us. If you're a longtime viewer of Zola Lever Presents, then you're probably a longtime supporter. And I just want to say thank you, as you know how important your donations are to keep this ministry on the air. If you're a new viewer, I'd like to talk to you for just a moment. It's very important that you remember that the only way that we can stay on the air is through your donations of support. Please remember us monthly, and thank you. Are Gentile believers meant to adopt the Mosaic Law? Is there a separate salvation covenant for Israel that removes the necessity of faith in Yeshua? Eitan Shishkov tackles these questions and more in today's resource, What About Us? In this book, Eitan uncovers concrete scriptural evidence of God's original plan for Jews and Gentiles to become one in Messiah and work together for salvation of national Israel. Learn the importance of how the Gentile church should relate to the remarkable messianic movement of Jews accepting Jesus. An important read for believers of all walks of life. Please call us or go online. And as for the resource, what about us? We have some great folks that are part of our team and we thank you for allowing Chaim Mailspin, who we love, Sarah Lieberman to be a part of our ministry. It's because of your financial support and we thank you for that. Recently, I had the opportunity to sit down with Sarah one-on-one -on -one and discuss parts of her life and her faith in Yeshua. Here's an interview in Jerusalem. Sarah, we are so excited that you are our new Hebrew teacher on Zola Levitt Presents. Now, you're Israeli. Yes. Correct. I was born here in the land, actually quite far north, north of the Sea of Galilee in a little town called Safed. And have you lived there your whole life? 
No, so I, when I was a little girl, we lived in the north of the country and then we moved down here to Jerusalem and I lived here and then now we live on the coast by the city of Caesarea. So I've kind of moved around. I still haven't been in the Mediterranean. I need to swim in the Mediterranean. Yes, we need to come to your house. It's nice and warm. Want. I know I heard. So have you lived in Israel your whole life? I've lived here most of my life. I actually married an American and we lived there for a while, but we live here now with our children in the land. And what are you doing here? I am a worship leader and okay. a recording artist. And so I spend my time um, just in worship, um, leading in different conferences and different things that happen here. And also I travel abroad as well. Now, I'm a mom. You're a mom. Also tell us real quick about your kids. We have three amazing kids. We have twins, a boy and a girl, and they're 10. And then we have another boy and he's eight. Tell us what is happening. I know in the Galilee, there are a lot of Messianics coming together. Can you tell us what you see happening in the land? I think that one of the main things that are happening today in Israel is we're seeing an emergence of worship in times of prayer all across the land. And this is unprecedented. I grew up here. I know what the body was like. We were small, we were few in numbers, and we weren't as bold, I think, in our expression. But today I see just even the generation of our children growing up with, with a confidence in their identity and who they are. As our youth have gone into the army, they have become exemplary soldiers and have been known as messianics and has really lifted kind of the perception and the, the knowledge in the Israeli society of the messianic movement. So do you feel that the messianics here, the believers and Yeshua in Israel are being more accepted by the traditional Jewish culture? I think that we are living in a time like we have never been living before in this country. I see an openness in the larger Israeli society that we haven't had before. In the north where we live, people are coming to faith. People are being healed on the streets. It's incredible. I also think that at the same time, you have certain portions of society that are becoming even more extreme. And so that sense of persecution is absolutely still there. And there are certain pockets and areas of the land that are definitely experiencing that kind of pressure. But praise God that amidst that pressure and that persecution, God and life is bursting forth. That's one of my favorite words here is the high. It's great life. It's amazing life. Just real quick before we end, for the people watching in America, what do you want from us as a believer in Israel? What do you want of the church? Probably the most significant thing that we need every day is prayer. It's the currency of heaven, right? Pray for us as a body, pray for the people of Israel, pray for um, just the society, the culture, that we be those people again that call on the name of the Lord. And, um, I think that those who choose to partner with the believers in the land, those who are doing the work, I've found that um, local people are open more to local people and they want to know workaday, everyday people. Mm -hmm. um, one of the first things that um, people ask me when I meet them or I'm talking to them about faith is, what do you do? You know, they want to know that people are working regular jobs and part of society and, you know, we live here. We pay taxes, mm -hmm. we celebrate the holidays, we send our kids to school. We're living our regular normal life here, just being a light as we go through our day. Well, we will continue to pray for you and your family and your husband and your kids. And as God continues to open up the doors to use the gifting and the giftings that he put inside of you, the worship that's coming out of the Galilee, because it's exciting what's happening. Thank you so much for being a part of Zola Levitt Presents. And it was wonderful to meet you face to face. Thank you. Are Gentile believers meant to adopt the Mosaic law? Is there a separate salvation covenant for Israel that removes the necessity of faith in Yeshua? Eitan Shishkov tackles these questions and more in today's resource, What About Us? In this book, Eitan uncovers concrete scriptural evidence of God's original plan for Jews and Gentiles to become one in Messiah and work together for salvation of national Israel. Learn the importance of how the Gentile church should relate to the remarkable messianic movement of Jews accepting Jesus. An important read for believers of all walks of life. Please call us or go online. And as for the resource, what about us?
For insightful perspectives on Israel and Bible prophecy, ask for our free monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter. At levitt.com you can read the newsletter, watch the TV program, or visit our online store. Stay current with us on social media via Facebook and Twitter. Come with us on a tour of Israel or Petra, or a cruise to Greece and Ephesus. Please contact us for more information. Dr. Seif has joined us now, and we're so glad that you're with us today. As you have seen in this program that our son lives in Israel and absolutely loves it. We don't know if he's ever going to come home, actually. <laughs> you know, I bet you, I bet you a lot of people would think, oh, you'd let your son there? Right. Isn't he getting blown up? I mean, it's such and a dangerous we've heard place. That, yes. We have had that question asked to us. Yes, how do you respond to that? Oh, my gosh. Uh -huh. He's safer there, safer in Israel, where he lives in Jerusalem, than, I don't even want to say, anywhere in the United States. But he is so safe. People don't realize what life no, is like there. They, they, they think it's a war zone, but it, it's great to see. It is a war zone. It's a spiritual war zone, but we see these testimonials in, in the program and in the life of your son and other sons and daughters, people just, uh, just blowing and going, serving the Lord. They've moved to Israel. The Lord opens up doors and there's a new testimony uh, coming out of Jewish believers. They're singing, they're speaking. It's, it's wonderful. And we have had the question, do you, do you have any anxious feelings about him living there? And as we walk the streets, he lives in the German colony, if, if some of you have been to Jerusalem, southern part of the city. And uh, we walk the streets with him, and there are women out jogging at night. Kids are out on the street, not on the street, but in the sidewalks playing. There is such a different peace. That shalom, that peace is, is thick there. It really is. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, I mean, I have kids in their 20s, and uh, I don't worry where they live. I'm concerned about how they live. Mm -hmm. I think uh, if we walk with the Lord, it's all good. And uh, walking with the Lord in the Lord's land. You know, 150 years ago, it didn't exist. 100 years ago, what of it? You know, right. 70 years ago, I mean, there's an anniversary now. They started coming uh, back before uh, 70 years ago, it's just, it's a fascinating story of, of God at work and bringing that world to life since Bible days we haven't seen and we're walking in those days again. And you've been 50 plus times, you're going again times, soon. yes. Have you ever thought about just moving there? You know, I've thought about it, but the Lord's given me a ministry here in various capacities. People are telling me, oh, you need to go there, but you got to go with what the Lord speaks to you. And I want to tell you something, if I can speak to the group, not to uh, distance myself from you, but uh, the Lord's doing new things in the world. Israel's reemergence as a state among men and women is an example of providence at work on planet Earth. And we can look and see how God is working there. And pastors like to give voice to not just what's happening in the house of Israel. Sometimes that's ignored, but they'll want to give voice to what's happening in the church house. And I'm pleased to see it. But, you know, we can see testimonies as well as individuals whose lives have turned around and they're on fire for the Lord. That's good. Let me just say that we need to see God at work in our own house, in our own world. I want to ask you, uh, to what extent you see God moving in rebuilding your own life and circumstances. Israel is a rebuild story. Jesus was a carpenter. He's all about building and rebuilding. And listen. I want you to be sensitive to the Lord in your life. You know, it says in the Gospel of John that the Comforter comes, the Holy Spirit, to guide us into all the truth. That doesn't just mean in, into good doctrine. It means into good living and new circumstances and new people. There are divine appointments for you. There's testimonies of God moving amongst the young in Israel today. Not just the young there, but the young here, but not just the young. I think there's a lot of attention for the young, and rightly so, but God ain't finished with me yet, and I'm 62 as I speak. Well, you don't look it. Well, you're but kind to think, say it. Moses was 80 yes. when he stepped into the greatest days of his life. God is still, and always still, call and beckon. Right. We yes. can think that the best days are behind us now and then, oh, come sweet Jesus and take me out of here. Maybe God's not finished yet. Maybe there needs to be some uh, risk, some faith, some seed sowing, some uh, movement 
being sensitive to what the Lord might be saying. Don't just, uh, um, don't just languish in your living room. People ask me, they see Israel is so dangerous. Isn't it dangerous? You know what I think the most dangerous place in the world is? Your living room. Because people just sit there and blob out, give up on life and just watch TV, you know, 10 hours a day. And here you are watching TV. Oops, I shouldn't have said that. But the point is, um, people stop living a life. And I I think that God is in the business of being in business. Right. And that's just not for folk on TV and folk in Israel. It's for those in living rooms that are watching this program right now. Do we focus enough on the new Jerusalem? I don't think so. I don't think there's enough focus on religious truth, period. There's 168 hours in a week. Preacher gives a message. Even in the message for 30 minutes, he or she might reference the Bible. They don't necessarily really drill down into it. I think uh, focus is a real problem in the world. My word that just came to life is high. Yes. And the Jewish people, that's why I think so many people are drawn because there's such great life within Judaism and Christ is life. So you combine the two and that life and what God wants to do through us still is strong and powerful as God woos his people to his people, you, and to the country, he's also wooing and calling us into his heart to give life more abundant than we could ever imagine. And do you know what the Jewish toast is? L'chaim. L'chaim. To life. <laughs> That's toast, not as in, uh, do you want butter on it, but as in <laughs> to life. L'chaim. Yes, Love that's, it. uh, it's beautiful. Thank you it so much really for joining us in, in what we're trying to do and reach people for Yeshua, Jesus, yes. to make him Lord of your life. He is Lord of our lives and he has changed our lives. Yes, and help us change others, by the way. Your donations really help. I know, you know, people don't like financial pitches. It's a 30-minute program. I might spend 30 seconds on it at that, but please. End our program today. Yes. Psalm 122, verse 6. Sha'alu shalom Yerushalayim. Pray, Pray for, for the, the peace, peace of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Our monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter, is free and full of insightful articles and news commentary from a messianic perspective. Visit levitt.com to find our newsletter along with current and past programs, our television schedule, and much more. Don't forget to order this week's resource by calling 1-800-WONDERS, or you can purchase it from our store at levitt.com. Your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries help these organizations bless Israel. Thanks again for joining us this week. Zola Levitt Ministries and this television program depend on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.